Itt vagyunk a 2015-es Mobile World Congress-en Chris king az Oracle kommunikációs igazgatójával, akivel az 5G-ről fogunk beszélni. Hi Chris, thanks for having you here. Oh, thank you very much for coming, stopping by. Um, we should talk about 5G a bit because, you know, 5G is one of the key things here on Mobile World Congress and every company has their own point of view about it. But for an end user, it might be hard to, you know, understand what 5G is going to be about. One of the key things is IoT, but I think 5G should be more than IoT. What's Oracle's point of view about 5G? Well, I think that much of the confusion around 5G is it's actually a broad range of standards. It's dealing with decreasing the latency in the network, so the amount of time that it takes for a device to communicate with the network. It's about increasing the speed of the network, making it so you can move more and more data between the device and the network. It's about being able to do things like network slicing. It's about being able to do things like increase the number of uh, devices that can be managed by a single network node. So it's a n wide array of different things, and I think that's where a lot of the confusion comes from. Uh, IoT is certainly going to take advantage of some of those things, but even IoT itself is multiple markets. Um, so I, th I think that's where some of the confusion begins with. Okay, and um, is it the aim of the companies to you know make these confused make these confused minds clean about how is it going to happen, or the Translation, how to say, the switching to 5G is just going to happen and at one point where many standards will be live and online, people and carriers will call it 5G instead of 4G? Well, I think it, you have to look at the history of all of these Gs. Um, each G is about 10 years apart and it takes about 10 years for it to reach maturity, at which point it's replaced or begins to be supplemented by the next G. If you go and look at the network today, You have 2G networks in play, you have 3G networks in play, and you have LTE, or 4G, in play. And within each of these Gs, you have many different standards. And if you think about some of the early days of some of these 4G, it's much faster today, it's much more capable today, it's much more stable. All of these are just part of the natural evolution as we work through what is really a 10-year or maybe even 20-year technology rollout. And this also means that by the come of 5G, 4G, 3G, and even 2G will exist, um, and there are going to be improvements about them? I think 2G is probably heading towards the end of having improvements, but I also think that 2G will probably be here for another 20 years. Uh, 3G is still being widely rolled out, and I don't anticipate it going away in another probably 30 years. And 4G LTE, um, it's probably got another 40, 50 years. So these things last for a very, very long time to start with because they're very expensive to roll out, but also because as you roll them out, you're putting something in place that covers a particular geography. And it can stay there and provide that service. And if the service works, why get rid of it? And are we talking about Europe here? Because as you might know, Nokia just released a 2G phone back in like two days ago. You know, that, that's, a, that's a really fun phone. I remember having one of those. I think I was in high school. Um, IoT, how fast is it going to happen? Do you have any statistics about it? Because in our point of view, every company says something a bit different about it. But it's clean that it's going to be billions of devices and it's going to happen soon. I think it's already happened. If you look at the earliest deployments of IoT, it's almost 10 years ago with telematics. So when you think about when a car is communicating through the cellular network, for example, I was just in an accident and the airbag went off in my car, call an ambulance, that's telematics, but that's also IoT. The car is saying, get me an ambulance. Um, we've had IoT in that, mo in that mode. IoT is also things like sensor networks. So you have a oil pipeline, and you have sensors on the pipeline. Today, those sensors are coupled by wires to a central monitoring station. And under IoT, they'll be connected wirelessly, so to save on the cost of the wires and the maintenance and all that kind of stuff. Um, so IoT is also going to be things like remote medical surgery, where imagine a situation where a patient isn't where there's a surgeon who can take care of their need. 
they can go into a surgical center and have a remote doctor perform the surgery. 5G will allow us to do that because of the speed and as you may remember the latency that I talked about earlier. Being able to ensure that every movement of the scalpel is exactly where and when the doctor intended it to be. I see. And um, last question. Everyone knows Oracle, but not everyone knows what Oracle does. What's your part of job, even on 5G and on IoT? Sure. Oracle in the communications industry focuses on really two key areas. We have the uh, applications, the systems that keep track of the records of the phone company. So the billing, the ordering, the customer care, the turning on of services in the network. All of those are one side of, of Oracle Communications. And then the other side is what we call the signaling side. And that's how the devices in the network talk to one another. And probably the easiest example of that is if you put your phone next to a radio, you know how it emits static? That's the phone talking to the network to say, hi, I'm here now. This is where, how I'm available to be called. And every few seconds it communicates to tell it where it is. That's, it. that's signaling, and that's what Oracle does. I see. Thanks for the interview, Chris. Thank you.